that comes back to my basic dating theme, which is don't look for your soulmate. Create a series of dating experiences where you're able to see what you like and what you don't like. You're feeding your consciousness with what I like and what I don't like. Not because you're writing a list or doing a therapy session. You're actually experiencing it. What I like, what I don't like. In the context of soon, in a year, the right person is going to come into my life with almost everything I like and almost everything I don't like is not there. And I'll give you an example of that. My daughter, Lauren, uh, she's uh, 31 now, and she's been looking for a house uh, for the last three years. And almost every Sunday when I'm in town, we will go look for houses and her partner. And we're all looking and we look at the house and we see what she likes and what she doesn't like. And I said, you just keep doing this and you'll see the right house will show up and the money will be there for it as well. It will just happen. And she went for, she trusts her dad. She says, all I have to do is just keep looking and say what I like and what I don't like, what I like and what I don't like, what I like and what I don't like. And it happened. She found the perfect house of what she, every, I mean, it's amazing to hear she needed a certain number of rooms. She needed the room here. She needed this. Everything needed to be exactly the right. And then she found the house that has that and something more. She couldn't even believe it was there that she didn't even imagine. And, you know, that's what Oprah said. I remember Oprah saying, if you just stick with trusting and, and, and doing what you can do, move one step at a time, you will be rewarded more than you can imagine. But part of that whole journey is what do I like? What do I not like? Without this emotional charge of, oh, I'll never get what I want and, oh, I didn't get what it was and, and being critical about it. No, it's just seeing what you like, seeing what you don't like, going another day, what you like, what you don't like, constantly appreciating what you like. But you can't fully appreciate what you like if you're not also looking at what you don't like. But you can't even see what you like if you're in that hyper vigilant state of, I want to buy this house. So I told her, we're not going to buy any houses. We're just going to keep doing, looking and looking and looking to get very clear about what you like and what you don't like. And it's all in the realm of like and don't like. There's not a lot of attachment to either, but this is what would be good. This would be good. And then bang, it appears and it's at the right time, right when she could afford it. I mean, it was like amazing, the timing and the perfection of it. And the way I found my house, and then I'll go into how I found my wife, but you know, it's finding the right person is another big, big question. You know, how do you find a person, start dating, but once you're dating, you're committed. That's stage three. Stage four is, is this really the right person for you to get married to? You know, is it a soulmate? Do you really stick with this and grow with this person? And, you know, you use the house analogy. I mean, for me, I was looking for a house and when I could afford more money for the house I'm in now, I've been here now 20 years. The, the, uh, the way, I looked for three years. I was looking at every house. I know almost every house in Mill Valley because there was all, it's all been for sale. And I go in, I go, I like this. I don't like this. And maybe it was a couple of years for me. And then finally, what I did is I just, I went and I said, you know, I'm going to go find the best place in town that I would like to live in the most. And I, I went there and, <laughs> and I saw the house that I would like the most. And I went and knocked on the door and the house was not on the market, but it was for sale. And it was, for a certain number of reasons, it was for sale for about half price. So because I went and found the house and called up the person in another state and said, can I buy your house? I got it for half of what, it, maybe a, a third less than what it was worth. Uh, simply because I was ready. I knew what I want. I looked at it and said, you are the one. And, but it was because I knew what I didn't like and what I like. And I, all the things I didn't like was not like I resent or I don't trust or that's awful. There wasn't any negativity associated with it. So again, coming back to our basic theme you asked me to start out with, which is create a series of positive dating experiences, taking note of what you didn't like and taking note of what you do like. And keep the intent to keep finding a partner that will have everything that you like. And coming from this non-needy place, and watching that, that wanting to jump into bed right away and slowing that whole thing down, but always reassuring the man that the feelings are there, but you're just going to go slow. And that's one place I say it's okay to fake it. If you're with if the right guy, you may not feel any sexual attraction right away. And if he's like making moves and says, but don't you feel sexual towards me? And you can give him a little comfort and, <laughs> and say, yes. I would love to have sex with you. I'm just not ready. And in your mind, you're telling the truth because you would say, I would love to have sex with you if those feelings were there. But you don't have to tell them those feelings aren't yet there. 
Uh, you just, it's a little bit implied, which I need to go slow and I'm ready to go. But if, boy, if those feelings are there, you can certainly say it, but then hold back till you have bonding with the heart and the mind and maybe a little bit more on the spirit. Spiritual bonding is where you share the same values. Mental bonding is often where you have differences, different point of view that's interesting to you. You know, if somebody's just thinking just like you, it's not interesting. If something is adding something to you and often the right person for you doesn't doesn't do everything the same as you. The chemistry of opposites attract. If you're looking for someone who's just like you all the time, it would be boring. And it also doesn't help your soul to grow. It's learning to challenge, to integrate something different into your life, which means that there'll always be an attraction. And it starts out as you find them interesting. And then it's on the level of the heart where you start finding things which are similar and where you share things. And But for a man, that's the level where you need to do things and you see you make an impact. Another little insight into men, and you know, you're in the fifth, fifth stage here where a man proposes, you know, I'm with Bonnie, I'm thinking, you know, maybe she's the one, but I wasn't sure. And I was ready and I was looking. There's, a, there's an old saying here I wanna point out, which is men really can be with the right woman, but they don't propose because they're just not ready. And it, typically men that have many partners the one they picked to marry is just the one that was there when he was ready to get married. <laughs> so there's a place inside of men where they have to feel inside of themselves that they have enough to provide for a woman's happiness. They have to have a series of positive experiences where they feel confident that they can make a woman happy. And uh, one time I was with a, a couple, they, they were together nine years and he wouldn't propose and she loved him so much. But what had happened is they'd gone to see this, uh, they'd gone on this tour of Hollywood, of uh, Beverly Hills. And she was just enamored with all the big houses and the beautiful lawns. And she was saying, oh, gosh, I bet they have a swimming pool in the back with a diving board. And they must have beautiful chandeliers. And he was hearing her loving all those things, thinking she deserves that. And I'll never be able to provide that. So I'm not going to marry her. And so he's always saying, I love you and everything, but you deserve better than me. And so that's deep inside of a man. It has to, he has to feel his worth that he can provide for you. And, and if he doesn't feel that experience, he doesn't get the confidence and the motivation to make that commitment. 